Many people asked me to do an update on my switch from Premiere Pro to Blackmagic's Resolve for both editing and color a year after I switched. The main reason I switched last year was Adobe wasn't updating their color tab as fast as Blackmagic was updating their editing tab. Considering how Adobe's quarterly profit seemed to be speeding up while the speed of Lightroom was slowing down, especially with 42 megapixel cameras. That to me was the writing on the wall. If Adobe engineers were sitting around and not totally recoding Lightroom from scratch to make it faster, how the heck are they gonna improve Premiere Pro's color tab to keep up with Blackmagic's pace on Resolve? I have no regrets one year later. Things are happening pretty much like I thought about a year ago. Blackmagic is busting their butt while Adobe is sitting on theirs. I was a beta tester for Premiere Pro and I found an issue they had with saturation. They acknowledged the problem and they never fixed it. I kid you not, my Adobe contact said there was only one person that could fix it and he was on vacation uh, when I asked about it and I guess it's a really long vacation because as far as I can remember, it never got fixed and that was well over a year after I mentioned it to him. So a quick history, I started on Pinnacle, I moved over to Sony Vegas, went to Premiere Pro and now I'm on Resolve. For anyone thinking about switching like I did, the first question you might have is performance. I'm not gonna lie, when I first switched to Resolve 12, it was slow when using the Sony XAVC-S codec. But what I lost in time during the editing of the footage, I gained back in the color tab when grading S-Log. I'm not saying Premiere's Lometri color tab is slow, I've just personally got faster results using Resolve. When Resolve 14 beta came out after NEB and promised a massive speed increase, I was all over that as soon as I finished my last Resolve 12.5 project. I had no problem dealing with the occasional beta crash in 14 because, oh, 14 was so fast compared to 12.5. The way I look at it is Resolve 14 is just as fast as Premiere now. And in some cases, like playback of Mini Ursa 4.6K raw footage, Resolve is actually faster than Premiere in terms of playing things back smoothly. So in the past year, I've really honed my keyboard skills on Resolve and I'm editing faster than I used to in Premiere Pro. Now I'm not making this video to try to get a whole bunch of people to switch over from Premiere Pro to Resolve because maybe I feel lonely and isolated because I'm about the only person using it. I'm really doing this just because people asked me how it was going with Resolve. There are some things in Resolve that just drive me a little nuts because it doesn't behave like Premiere Pro did. But there's also some features that Resolve has that Premiere Pro probably will never have. I would call the face refinement tool a game changer for anyone like me that does not own a color panel and can't generate windows around faces, eyes really quickly. It does it all for you and on my new computer it can analyze the footage really fast. On the flip side I would say Premiere Pro can handle more video and audio codecs seamlessly than Resolve. But like I said before, Resolve is updating really quickly. Take some time and think about it. It's a major decision to switch from one NLE to another, especially because you lose all your muscle memory. Things that might be preventing you from switching from one NLE might be multicam, it could be collaboration, integration with Audition or After Effects, and plugins. Some people might just live or die when it comes to certain plugins that they absolutely need for every edit that perhaps Resolve doesn't have. You know, I, I totally get that. Starting with Resolve is pretty easy. You just download it for free, start cutting with it. And if you really like it and you need some more extras like noise reduction and lens flares, you can pay a one-time fee of $300. I say one-time fee because I've asked this question many times at NEB with Blackmagic reps, and they said they basically are never going to charge for an upgrade. So you pay once, $300, and you're done. Now, of course, that could possibly change, but every time I've asked that question, they said they're not charging for updates. In terms of crashes, since the final version of 14 came out, it has not crashed on me once, and that's with two different computers. They have a feature that's called Live Save, so you never have to save it, and it does it all for you in the background. So that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later.